okay. On this episode... Just pop a needle in and find out. Andrew investigates a worrying lump on horse coda for a possible killer disease. What we don't want is for nothing to come into the needle, because that means that we do have a cancerous lump. Whoa. It's okay. But can he get close enough to find out? It's all right. And Dr. Rachel is feeling the pressure. Her feet are a little bit red, so I'd say she probably has gotten a little bit of heat stress. When a passionate wildlife warrior brings in two distressed little Aussies. I feel like crying, I get so upset. <laughs> She's sick, I really do. Yeah. There you go, feel good. I just really love animals. Hey mate, good boy. And I love the joy they bring to our lives. But first on this episode... We'll get them out quickly. Andrew and his team are fighting to save the lives of seven newborn puppies. Come on, little one. We are breathing? No. I'll not give up just yet. Come on, little guy. Come on. Bringing her fashionable French bulldog to see Andrew today is Gucci's stylish owner, Sally, and her children, Flynn and Alexi. Come on. Come on, sweetie. Come on, Bobby. Where did Gucci get her name? Well, I obviously love Gucci brand and Prada and all of the, those brands, so yes. Good morning. You're in with Gucci today. I'm in with Gucci today, please. Oh, just take a seat. Thank you. Thank Come on, Bobby. She's just such an amazing dog. She's amazing with the children, Alexi and Flynn. They spoil her rotten. And she is another child to me, basically, but a family member to all of us. How's yeah. Gucci going? She's going well. Pretty big. You reckon she's pregnant? <laughs> yeah. No. Okay, let's take her through. Go on, Gucci. Come on. Gucci is a gorgeous French bulldog who's about to have some puppies. She's got a huge big belly on her, and I reckon she could give birth any day now. How's she been going? Yeah, Gucci's been going really well. So she's been eating okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The plan today is to do an ultrasound of Gucci's belly. Yeah. We're going to have a look at the heartbeats of the pups and make sure they're beating nice and strongly and they're yeah. viable. And then I think we should do an x-ray, count how many pups there are in there. Yeah. French Bulldogs definitely have trouble giving birth naturally. They do have wide heads, big bodies, and only little back ends, so we've got to try and make sure she doesn't have any problems. So all you're seeing is different levels of black, white, and gray, basically, okay. which is the sound waves that are bouncing off different structures inside the abdomen. Okay. Andrew's colleague, Dr. Naomi, performs the ultrasound scan on the two-year-old. I can see some spines. Oh, wow. My heart's obviously beating away pretty yes, fast, that, that looks yeah. great. The images are encouraging for Gucci, the vets and Sally. Okay, so we've definitely got a live puppy in there. Yeah. I've seen multiple so far. It's another one. A little heart Yeah. Here. yeah. And then we have the spine here. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It is amazing. And everything looks good so far on ultrasound. Thank you. Excellent, thank you very much. Reassured, Gucci's unborn babies appear healthy. X-ray. The next pictures should show how many pups the second time mum can expect to give birth to. X-rays are two-dimensional. It's not an exact science when we count the pups and sometimes one pup can be counted a couple of times. They're curling around or they could be overlapped so there could actually be some little surprises. So we're looking for the black outline of the skull. So I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a possible nine here. It is a lot of pups, yes, but we're going to do everything that we can to keep her happy and the pups healthy and happy. It's time to break the big news to Alexi and Flynn. You ready for the news? Are you ready? Excited? Yes. What do you Why? guess? Nine. Yep, you're right. Looks like there could be nine. But Gucci had yeah. serious problems delivering a year ago. So Andrew's worried a natural birth will be too dangerous. Given now that we know there are nine pups, the best thing for the safety of the puppies and for Gucci, yeah. I think we should book her in for a caesarean, yes. keep those pups and Gucci as safe as possible. Yes, that sounds good. Thank you. Bye. Gucci will be back tomorrow to give birth to her much anticipated new arrivals. Come on, Bobby.
It's another busy day in the Ulladulla clinic, and a call has come in for Ash. Hello, Ash speaking. Which Ash? Wrong Ash. I'll get the other Ash. Hello, Ashley speaking. Oh, sorry. Not the right Ash. Ash, for you. Hello, Ashley speaking. Ashley speaking. One of the interesting things about the clinic is that we don't have just one vet nurse called Ash. We have four of them. Ash, I've got a job on the farm. Will you please join me? Sure. Um, <laughs> so that can be a little bit confusing. I'm Ash number one, so I've been here for, this is my 11th year. I am the original Ash. Ash will just hold him for a moment. Josh, we found, we're just gonna find his jugular vein up here. Good job, doctor. <laughs> all the Ashes are really great at what they do. They're all totally different. All good, Ash? Yeah, everything's all good, great. Nice. They are really fun though, and that's one thing we definitely encourage here. So we do like to have a good muck around together. Well, there was only that's one fun. Ash for a while. And then I came along. <laughs> and then me. And then the improvement. <laughs> it's like the upgrade. <laughs> Ash, come here for a sec. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's delivery day for fashion-conscious Sally and her chic French bulldog, Gucci. Hi Sally, how are you? Thank you. Uh, Gucci's here for her season. Gucci will give birth by caesarean to an anticipated nine babies. Gucci is ready, 100%. So she started nesting. Last night she was very tired, just wanted to lay down, and yeah, she's ready. <laughs> Made it through. Ready okay. for today. <laughs> Ready for today. Big day, isn't it? It is a big day. No worries. It's important that Gucci has a cesarean today because she has had problems before. We'll just give her a good check over and have yeah. a listen to her heart. And yep. I think it's time to do the operation. Mm -hmm. I think so. You're in good hands, aren't you, Bubby? Hey? I know how much Sally loves Gucci and I know she's definitely worried, but hopefully we're going to have a great result. Heart's racing away, she's a little bit nervous yeah, I think yeah, today I think so. for sure. And the pups would be putting a bit more pressure up pressure. on that chest mm -hmm. as well. So I think um, certainly it's time to take her through to the surgery. Bye Dad. Come on fatty. See you All right. soon. No worries. Yes, it does make me anxious waiting for the new babies to come. But I know they're in good hands with Andrew and the team here at Ulla Dulla Vets. So hopefully everything will be okay. In all the short-nosed dogs, like French Bulldogs and Pugs, we worry that their breathing is a little bit compromised. You can even hear Gucci's laboured breathing right now. So it's really, really important to give oxygen now just to try and help those lungs, and then we'll give a bit of a sedation, go with the anaesthetic and just get the pup straight out of there. You guys all right with the towels? Yep, yep. Okay, no worries. Let's go, Chris. There are so many puppies in there that the whole team is on standby, so every pup gets the attention that it needs. Here we go. These are all the pups that we're seeing just here. They're all pretty big pups, actually. Time is really important here. We want the procedure to be as quick as possible so that anaesthetic doesn't make the pups too drowsy on the inside. We don't really know if we have all live pups in there. The risk is that we might find something we don't really like. No pressure is starting to drop. Okay. Thanks, Aaron. Come on, Monica. Good girl. Hello. Close by. Wildlife carer Olympia has brought in two rescued native animals for Dr. Rachel to look at. Good girl. Baby wombat Monica was rescued after her mother was run over by a car and died. Come on, we'll just go straight in the consult room. Come on, Monica. Come on, Monica. Monica. Come on, Monica. Good girl. As well as Monica, Dr. Rachel will check out tiny swamp wallaby Poppet, who was also rescued after her mum was killed on the road. You never know what you're going to get with Olympia. She's probably my personal favourite and one of our most valuable wildlife carers that we work with. 
Yes. I had to wake her this morning. Normally, she's the first up. Okay. She's just not been settling. Last night, she was off her milk. She wasn't nibbling on grass. I really was worried. And three months you've had her for now? Yes, okay. yes. You couldn't do it if you didn't love animals. I absolutely love all wildlife, including the grasshopper that was on my head when I got out of the car. <laughs> all right, Monica, it's all right. I really was worried because it is hot. So worried she might be a bit heat stressed? Yeah. She's been very good in terms of health and behaviour. Yeah. But they're not pets, they're wildlife. Wombats are very prone to heat stress. They, they like cool temperatures. During the day in the wild, they're in their burrows pretty much the whole day. They don't really see the sun. So in care, it can be hard to mimic that cool climate for them. So they are quite prone to heat stress and the weather has been very warm lately. Yeah, yeah, sounds fine. It's not going too fast, so yeah. she's not oh, too... Okay. I don't think yeah. she's too stressed right now. Monica's heart appears healthy. So Rachel checks for any other signs that could indicate why the eight-month-old is not quite herself. Looks fine, nice and clean. I feel like crying, I get so upset <laughs> because she's sick. I really do. Yeah. Oh, oh well, when you've had her for that long. Oh, no, well, I know. You hate more than this for us. suffer, but just not like her. Baby wombats have got to be up there as one of the cutest animals in the whole world, in my professional opinion, as a vet. They're just absolutely divine. Can't get cuter. Very charismatic, very funny. Yeah, they're great. All right, look, Olympia, honestly, she's looking pretty good to me. Her feet are a little bit red, so I'd say she probably has gotten a little bit of heat stress, but everything's checking out okay. She seems well hydrated. I think, you know, it might be worth giving her a little bit of lectate. Try and really keep her cool in this hot weather, and I think she'll be okay. You're doing a good job. Overall, I think she's in really good condition. I'm not too worried about her. Perfect. Oh, thank you. Monica gets the all clear, but Olympia is extremely concerned about Poppet. The frail orphan wallaby was rescued from the side of the road just two days ago. She's so gentle, Monica. Oh, I know. Is. I know you want, you want a kiss. She's like, why are you cuddling Poppet? Yeah, not me. <laughs> Poppet is not even a kilo in weight and she's got an ear infection so I need Rachel to check it up. So I think let's move on to my next patient, Miss Poppet. Poppet, she's been Pop very you down, patient. you can hang out down there, Monica. Okay. Dr. Andrew and his team are racing against time to deliver an expected nine babies from French Bulldog Gucci. How's it looking, Ash? Yep, we're nice and pink. Each of the pups is in their own sack, so I need to find each sack and break the sack. Come on, little fella. I quickly hand over the pup to one of the nurses and they'll stimulate the heart and clear the airways. Nothing yet. You want to hear a noise or some movement as soon as possible? Come on, little one. Yeah, we've got a little squeak there. Hi, darling. Once they start coming out and you start waking them up and you hear those little cries, it's always a happy moment. Yes, good kid. Oh, we got a squeak. So far, so good. We're actually doing pretty well. Hey, mate, here you go. Welcome to the world. That's what you want to hear. I'm really confident we've got the best team. I know the nurses are experienced, they're dedicated, and they love doing this. <laughs> Hello, sweet. There you are. The nurses are joined by vets Dr. Romy and Dr. Rachel. I can hear a heart rate, which is good. We just want them to wake up now, make some noises, call out for the mum. I think we only have seven pups, so Bit of a surprise. We weren't sure whether we had eight or nine, but still a great result with seven live pups. They're looking okay? But as the seventh and final baby is born... I don't like this one's chances. Some of the fragile little puppies are struggling to survive. Hey, little girl. You gonna wake up for me? Anytime we have a caesarean and there is a decent sized litter, there is a big potential of losing a puppy. Are they all okay out there? Um, we've got possibly one that's not going to make it. Come on.
I'll pop it, trying not to cry. Dr. Rachel is about to examine tiny swamp wallaby Poppet, brought in by concerned wildlife carer Olympia. Poppet, say hello. I've never had a macropod no. with an ear infection, so I, not common. I wasn't sure. Was it this one? Yes. And what did it look like? There was a pustule and a scab. Okay. And there was crusty thing on her ear. Oh yeah, I can see what you mean. You still it's see, a little yeah, bit crusty yeah, there, still isn't there. It? Pop it, a young swamp wallaby, she would have been in the pouch still. You can pop it, it's all right. I know. I won't keep you out long, I'm just going to have a little look of you. She was in the mother's pouch and okay. the mother was hit by a car. So she's also a car accident. Oh, I don't know how long she was on the road for. This yeah. wound could be from that trauma. Was she still in the pouch? She wasn't thrown out of the pouch? No, she was out of the pouch. She was out, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's possible she's scraped on the road or something. It's really sad how much wildlife we see suffering from road traffic accidents, especially babies in pouches that often come out uninjured, but of course they have no parent anymore, so there's a lot of time that needs to go into their rehabilitation. So first thing I'm going to do with Poppet is just give her a full check over, make sure there's no other injuries that I need to be worried about with her, and then I'll have a look down that ear that Olympia's concerned about. So it's all looking really clear, no other injuries. So she's stressing because yeah. she's too young to be out of the yeah. pouch. Oh, she oh like they it. hate being yeah, out of the they pouch do, at this they? stage. Come on, my darling. You ready? There she goes. Good girl. <laughs> Finding no other obvious road trauma injuries on Poppet, Rachel begins examining the baby orphan's worrying left ear. I might just grab the otoscope and have a little look down the ear canal and see if there's any infection down that canal. Yeah. Sorry, sweetie. There's definitely a bit of crusty, scabby material down there. Sorry, Poppet. There you go. All right. I think what's happened is there's just a little wound at this entrance to her ear canal. I think she's okay down the ear canal, but I might just take a little swab of it and see if it's infected. Oh, thank you. When I look into Poppet's ear, I can see that there's a little bit of crust on the entrance to the ear canal and a little bit further down. Her eardrum is intact, which is good, and there's no inflammation or anything like that further down the ear canal. So an ear infection in this case, I'd expect to see bacteria. So either little rod-shaped bacteria or little round bacteria called cocci. While Rachel checks the swab from Poppet's ear for a possible infection. Monica. Baby wombat Monica is getting up to mischief. And Olympia gives other recently orphaned infant some much needed TLC. So are you trembling? All clear? <laughs> Not quiet. <laughs> All right, so good news. Uh, there's not really any infection down the ear canal. So oh, okay. I think that little pus we're seeing is just from a wound right there, which oh. may have just been from the trauma of being thrown on the road. I think probably that's going to heal on its own, oh, um, but right. definitely we'll keep a close eye on it. And if it's not, then we oh. can look at putting medication yes. down the ear. Oh, good. But yeah. Oh, thank you. No thank worries. Thank you so much. <laughs> and we like to oh, give it a little quite bit Quite emotional, eh? Oh, it's beautiful. <sighs> Big relief for both of them. The clean bill of health for Poppet and Monica means before too long, both can be released back into the wild. Of course I get sad. It really is like bringing up a child. They've got to go. So there's no time for tears. You know, the important thing is, you know, you've done a good job when they, when they leave you. I think I'll just carry her out because she's half asleep now. Look at her. She is. <laughs> All this excitement's too much for Monica. Oh, there we go. Thank you. You're very <laughs> welcome. We haven't still made any noise yet, so I'm going to keep trying. Come on. Is her blood pressure okay? It is low, but she's currently stable. Okay, we'll be quick. As Andrew and his fellow vet, Dr. Christian, look after Mum, I won't relax till I start hearing some little puppy cries. A dedicated team of vets and nurses battles to keep several of the newborn pups alive. All of a sudden I hear rumblings that some of the pups aren't doing so well. Only two of them are making noises, so I'm starting to get a little bit concerned. Come on. Oh, there we go. Yep, took a breath. 
I didn't think he was going to make it at first. For a while there, he just yet to breathe and his heart was really slow, but he's now breathing and squeaking and doing everything that we want him to be doing. Eventually, six of Gucci's tiny babies are breathing by themselves. But the future of the final puppy born looks perilous. No luck. Come on. Dr. Romy comes to nurse Ash's aid as they try desperately to save baby number seven. Nurse Ash has been working on this puppy for some time now. He still has pink gums and she thinks there's hope. <sighs> Chances aren't great, but we're gonna keep trying and not give up just yet. Come on, little guy. I can see the emotion in Nurse Ash's face. She usually tries and stays really professional, but I can see that it's tearing her apart. Are you breathing? No. I know in my heart that the reality is that he's not going to make it. So I'm going to have to make the call and tell Nurse Ash. I think he hasn't breathed for so long now. We better call. You don't want to give up. You don't want to stop trying, but you've got to sort of accept us to a point where nothing you do is going to bring him back. Meanwhile, an exhausted Gucci is beginning to wake to find her three new daughters and three new sons eagerly taking their first drink from mum. Great job, Gucci. You did very, very well. I'm super proud of my team and today it's been a great result. Hey Sal. Hello. Here are your babies. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and here's Hello. your gorgeous girl. Oh, they're perfect. Aren't they gorgeous? They are, they're beautiful. Gucci did really, really well. So she made it through the anaesthetic really stably. Yeah, um, right. She'll be a little bit tired tonight. Gucci is just such an amazing dog. We love being hands on with the puppies and raising them with Gucci, so can't wait. Gucci will be a great mum again. She is a good mum. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Oh. How good's this day, Ash? What a beautiful day. We should go paddle boarding. That would be really good. In Ulladulla, duty calls as Andrew and vet nurse Ash head to a local farm. So Ash, we've had a call from Josh, one of the horses at his place who has a big lump on the chest. It could be a tumour, it could be a foreign body like a piece of stick, it could be a bite from something or a kick from the other horse. Get out there and have a look. I hope it's well behaved. Yeah. You never know with horses. Here we are. Good day, Josh. How are you going? Very well, thanks. This is Ash. How are you, Ash? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Yep. Good to see the horse. Let's go and have a look. No worries. When did you notice it? About a week ago or About something. About a week? Yeah, yeah sure. Josh is a great bloke. I've known him for many years. He's bred these horses on the property and they are his babies. I'll let you catch him. So he does get concerned any time there is a problem. He's a good boy. Yeah, he has his days. Today's patient, Coda, shares his paddock with his little sister, Alicorn. You're part of the family, aren't you, eh? Alicorn's a cheeky little girl. She's one of the friendliest horses you'll ever meet. She sticks her nose in everywhere she shouldn't, but just wants to get pats and vet nurse Ash is more than happy to oblige. Nurse Ash is in her element at the moment. She loves horses and she's happy to be out here. Hey Coda, you're a good boy. But big brother Coda is the reason for the visit with a worrying lump on his chest. It has gone down a little bit today, but not, not that much. Well, it's still pretty big though. Yeah. It's still a problem, for sure. Whenever they develop a lump or something, it's always a concern, so yeah. Anytime you see a bloke like Josh concerned, it definitely rings alarm bells. That lump could be anything from an abscess, a kick, an insect bite, or worse still, a cancer. How old's Coda, Josh? Oh, I'd say four and a half, maybe, okay. yeah. Sure. Did you born on the place? Yep. Yeah, cool. Yep, right there. Right, right there. there? Yeah. Right there she oh, was. Excellent. Oh, excellent. Found her in the morning, yep. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, no, he's Eating good. pretty good health yeah, generally? Yeah, he's a good boy. Yep, yeah, 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 yeah
No worries. We're just going to have a listen to his heart. And then we'll have a listen to Coda's guts as well. Yep. Take the temperature. And then we'll come back to the lump in a sec. Yep. If the heart rate gets elevated, it can mean they're in a lot of pain or discomfort. So we just want to make sure that he's not, not too sore. They're pretty brave souls, so they can be a bit more painful than they make out generally. Well, his guts are working okay. Is he just with her the whole time? Yeah, at the moment there's only two of them. The okay. The other ones have gone to a mate's place. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Do they normally get on? Okay. Yeah, they're fine. Okay. Yeah. She yeah. wouldn't kick him normally or anything? No, nah, I generally? would say it's more when they've been playing. Yeah. If, if it's been a kick, okay. I would say they're not they're not nasty to each other or anything like that. Oh, sure. So, not like most brothers and sisters. But... Yeah. Sorry, mate. That's the bad part. Over and done with. Temperature's actually 37 and a half, which is perfectly normal. Having done a full checkup, I'm pretty confident he's actually in really good nick, and that's a great sign. Now I've actually got to deal with the lump. We don't normally have that little scar over the top, as far as you can see? No. No? No, no, no. It hasn't been weeping or anything like that. No. Okay, so it's just been like that, so it makes me think it's been... Kicked. Uh, just kicked or yeah, something sure. like that. Yeah, sure. Just pop a needle in and find out. Yep. What I'm going to do is do a fine needle aspirate, which is to put a needle into the lump directly, and then draw back and see what comes out. What we don't want to happen is for nothing to come into the needle, because that means that we do have a cancerous lump. So we're just going to give him an injection straight into his vein. So what we're going to do first is give Coder a little sedation, just make him relax a bit more and not be painful when we give the little prick. We've actually got to be really careful with these things because we've got a 500 kilo horse, and if he rears up, it could be myself, Ash or Josh in the firing line. Ash will just hold him for a moment. Josh, yeah, you no find, we're just going to find his jugular vein up here. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he'll be a little bit sleepy in a moment. Good boy. It's okay, mate. Whoa, it's okay. Good boy. That's got it. There you go, mate. Good boy. Andrew suspects a possible cause for the lump could be a kick from another horse. We'll just give that a sec to work and then we'll come back to it. And the prime suspect, little sister Alicorn, is keeping a close watch on the proceedings. How's it going, Ash? Getting there? He's getting there. With the sedation now taking effect, Andrew can insert a fine needle to draw out any fluid from inside Coda's lump. We'll scrub the area and try and draw some of the cells out, and then we're going to smear it onto a slide if we can, if it's an actual hard lump, if it's a hematoma from the actual kick, say, from maybe this one or whoever else did it, yep. then there'll be blood that comes out, or if there's an abscess, it could actually be that something's stuck in there. Okay. which we'll have to try and investigate to get it out. No, no, all good. Okay. Andrew's hoping the lump isn't something more sinister. So when I stick the needle straight into the lump, what we want to happen is for fluid to come out ideally. What we don't want to happen is for there to be no fluid, which means that there's actually hard cancer cells inside. The flies are a bit, a bit of a problem. What we've got is actually this fluidy type of stuff. So you can see it's a bit blood tinged. Doesn't actually look pussy at this stage, but I think it's likely to be something called a seroma, which means that we've had some damage to the actual muscle tissue. So I reckon we've either run into something or it could be a kick, definitely. Yep. But it's actually good news, Josh. I yep. reckon. So Excellent. It has gone down. Yeah. More so in the last probably day or so. Than before. Yeah. yeah. But today, when I see it today, it's probably gone down it's more than smaller. Yeah. Uh, very relieved there's nothing wrong with Coda because he's part of the family. There's definitely this firm head on it just yeah. here, so I do. So I reckon we have had something that's actually whacked yep. into it, yep. whether it's a hoof or otherwise. Yeah, it looks pretty painful as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. what I think we'll do is go with some pain relief yep. um, in the food yep. and should look pretty good and let us know how we go in a couple of days. What we're going to do now is give Coda some powder that makes him more comfortable for a few days, settles down the swelling, and I reckon this will fix the problem. If we can give two sachets tonight, yep. and then you'll give one every night from now on for the next few days. Yep. Oh, yeah. there you go. Look at that. Yeah, yum yum. <laughs> uh, looks 
Buggy had a hard night, but look at him. Yes. Josh was definitely concerned, I can tell, but I think he's pretty happy now. The horse is going to be okay. Hopefully this will make you feel better. Thanks, Josh. See ya. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.